to introduce the bill. Thank you, Ken Corda, and I will be sharing time with Deputy Martin Ferris as well. Uh, first of all, I am delighted to be here to present this bill to the House today. Uh, the Island Fisheries Bill is a bill which is designed for to put in place uh, a licence for fishermen who live on the islands, on our offshore islands, and who gain their income from island fishing. So it's, it's specifically for those group of people, which is a quite a small number of people in context, context of the overall fishing fleet. Uh, when we talk about squall-scale fishing, we're talking about fishing that's carried out by vessels of an overall length of less than 12 metres. So these are all small boats and not using towed fishing gear, as is listed in Table 3 of the Commission Regulation EC 26-2004. Now, what we're talking about here is small-scale coastal fishing, and we're talking about it occurring within the six-mile territorial limit, including the baseline. In addition to that, it's important to point out that all of the, of the, the fishing that is carried out in these, in these islands, in these island waters, which is in the six-mile zone, really it's, you're talking about particular species of fish which would not affect many parts of the quota that we're looking about. It is expected that the quota that will be required would be in less than 1% of the overall national quota. It's also important to point out that this is a licence which will be non-transferable and that the holder of the licence will not be able to lease it or seek to transfer it to any other person, and that the licence holder will have to be on board the vessel whilst fishing. So, you know, worries that people would have or concerns they'd have of some kind of abuse occurring in regard to all of this are taken care of in this bill. The introduction of a non-transferable community island quota is really what we're trying to bring about here. Of course, all of this comes, and I'm delighted that, uh, that Minister Andrew Doyle is here, because all of this comes from a previous Dáil uh, cross-party committee, which he was actually the chair of, and I want to congratulate him and his work in bringing the, the proposal to have this bill this far, and now that others have brought it a little bit further, I'm sure that we will welcome the support of the Minister and his government in regard to the bill, seeing that they were the, very much at the initial stage of its conception. The, um, the quota we're talking about, as I say, is less than 1% of the national quota. It's for appropriate species within the six-mile limit, and really what we're talking about here is artisan fishing. Now, artisan fishing is something that uh, happens in many, many parts of the world, where you have small coastal communities that depend on fishing, where you're not talking about the big boats and the big vessels. Because most of the people who deal with this kind of fishing, really and truly, they are looking out to the sea and they are noticing every time that they go out to fish, that the fish are getting less and less, and the huge big vessels, particularly the super trawlers, are coming in and cleaning them out. Last, um, I think it was last February, around this time last year, I attended a conference in the United Nations which was about the Sustainable Development Goals 14, which was about keeping our, our, our ocean environments clean and pure and looking for a sustainable future for them. And one of the big issues that came up there was about protecting the rights of artisan fishers across the whole world. And indeed, the big thing around that was making sure that the large fishing vessels had their wings clipped and that there was some regulation put in place to them. And that's really, I suppose, one of the big issues that we have in respect of that, that very, very many of the, the, um, the fishermen that go out for to try and make their living are continually finding that they can't catch the fish that they have traditionally fished in the way that they've done it for, for probably for centuries in many cases. Of course, we also have to recognise the reason why this particular bill is to deal with the islands. And, you know, it is quite true to say, and many people have pointed out, that, you know, uh, coastal communities in many areas where you have small fishermen, small fishing vessels fishing from them, are under huge pressure. And we understand that. But this particular bill is to deal with the island fishermen because the island communities, and indeed that was the reason for the proposal that first came from the, the the, the, um, from the committee, the island communities are being decimated by depopulation. I mean, we have Arranmore Island between 86 and 2006 has lost 206 people. Bear Island in Cork is down 63 people in the same period. The Arran Islands, almost 120 less people living on those islands now than there were in 1986. All of the islands are losing their populations in every generation, more and more. And we need to do something, and that was recognised by the cross-party committee, for to do something to make a, a clear way in which we could arrest that and turn it around. And this bill, which we hope can be developed very speedily when it goes to committee and is processed through so that any fine-tuning can be done at that stage, can bring us to a situation where the Irish government can issue fishing licences to fishermen that live on the islands and fish off the islands and make their livelihoods from that, using a very small portion of quota to ensure that their livelihoods can be, be, um, be maintained and sustained into the future. 
We have, of course, uh, some people saying that the, the, the division of the quota is a difficulty for the government to do in this matter because the island fishermen don't have uh, the, the track record, I think is the, is the term that's been used. In fact, when one looks at Article 17 of the regulations in the, basic, in the common fisheries policy, we see that the, the competency is there within the member state for to decide how it wants to use the body of quota which it is given. Member states shall use transparent and objective criteria, including those of an environmental, social and economic nature. So the government doesn't have to base it on what previous actions have taken place by fishermen in the past. They can base it on looking on the specific environmental, economic and social context in which these fishermen need to make a living. And that's really what this is all about. It's about trying to bring us to a situation where we can ensure that the island fishermen can make a living into the future. And I think if we can do anything today, and I'm sure we'll have a, we'll have a good debate, and there's, there's others, while I actually come from uh, County Leitrim, South Leitrim, and Leitrim has only, as you know, a very small coastline and no island, certainly no habitable island on the uh, offshore island, but I'm, I'm very close to County Longford in the Midlands. But people from all over Ireland, people from every part of the country, have a huge empathy with our fishing community and understand that our fishing community go out for to try and make a living, particularly those on the smaller boats, and take huge risks in doing so. And indeed, very often we see situations where people are lost at sea and there's, there's huge empathy and huge sympathy for people in that community who try so hard and work so hard for to make a difference for their families and, for their, and to ensure that they have a livelihood. Now, this bill is about dealing with this specific quota for the island communities to make a difference into the future. And I, would, I know that from what we've heard to date, certainly from many of the parties in this House and many of the TDs in this House are prepared to support this bill and understand what it's trying to do and where we're trying to go with it. And I would appeal to the Minister, seeing he was there at the conception of the idea which has brought this bill about, that he would work with the others in his government to make this bill a reality and to support the bill, to bring it back to committee stage and to get it through the houses so that we can do something which is concrete and firm for the island communities into the future. I will now pass over to Deputy Ferris. Thank you. Uh, Margot, young caller. I'm in this house 16 years this year and uh, to be quite honest about it, an awful lot of bull and and waffle goes on in here. But I can honestly say that this, this bill and the conception of this bill going back to the 2012 uh, when the committee report of which you chaired, uh, uh, Minister, was probably one of the better things that I've been associated with. Uh, in, in 2012, both you and uh, obviously all the, the committee members were quite startled by the decline in the population in our rural communities and in particular our islands. So our objective was, all party objective was at that time, was to try and do something to reverse this and try to address the socio-economic challenges facing our rural communities, both in the islands and in, in, uh, as well. And on the back of this, we were relying on other reports, I think 2009 report, uh, the Fisheries uh, of Ireland, Offshore Islands report, Sustaining Island Livelihoods, as well as a report on Gaeltic Islands. And it was quite clear that the offshore island communities, uh, irrespective of whether they were Gaeltic Islands or English-speaking islands, there was a historical aspect of it, dependence upon fishing as part of their livelihood. And that this had dried up and the substance as a source of employment and income was taken from them. Uh, we set up the, the Joint Subcommittee on Fisheries, was established in December 2012. It commenced its detailed work 2013 and it culminated with the report entitled Promoting Sustainable Rural Coasting and Rural Coastal and Island Communities. And during that period, uh, Minister, as you're aware, we met with uh, on eight occasions uh, in public and on nine occasions uh, in private uh, with various uh, groups. Wide sections of stakeholders and detailed consideration of issues arising from the oral and written submissions received, as well as the research work undertaken by the Rockless Library and Research Services, all contributed significantly to the development and the finalisation of the 29 recommendations on that report. And that report has been sitting there since. And my two co colleagues here, uh, Pierce Doherty and Martin Kenny, uh, have decided 
that this cannot be allowed to continue. A report that was an awful lot of work went into collective work, all party agreement, right across the board, sitting there. So we took it upon ourselves uh, and asked support from various uh, other groups in here, uh, parties in here and individuals in here, to support this bill. And I, we've got overwhelming response from most. Unfortunately, the government uh, have not committed themselves as of yet. And I would hope, Minister, that in your contribution here today, that you will give your support to this. I think you will, you will be living up to your, um, your work as chairman of the committee that uh, was, it was, was the, at the conception of this, of this bill. And uh, obviously, you will be living up to what you said during that debate uh, over that period of time. Now, within the, within the bill and the motivation behind it, is there's a forgotten community out there, a forgotten community in our islands and coastal communities that have been neglected politically consistently by various political parties down through the years, that have been neglected for the very bloody reason is that they don't have the numbers to make a difference in an election. That's the reason they have been neglected. That's the reason they have been abandoned by the political establishment of this state. And that continues to be the case. And if you look even at the, how the whole common fishing policy works and how the, the distribution of quota and so forth, it is designed and continues to be implemented, certainly, uh, to facilitate the, 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 those uh, who are even considered at the large scale end of the big beneficiaries at the end of it. And that is wrong. Because all resources are a natural resource. They don't belong to the individuals. And there's an obligation on each and every one of us here as legislators to ensure that we treat everybody fairly. And that includes the people, uh, our people that live on the islands. And we, there's an, a huge indictment on the political system that has allowed, and Deputy Kinney has read out there, the, the decline in the population since 1986 on our islands right across the coast. So that's the obligation is on each and every one of us to ensure that we give them fair play. And part of giving them fair play is to give them a sustainable income, an income where they can live, where they were born, where their parents were born, their grandparents were born. They have a traditional uh, linkage to those islands, rather than forcing them to immigrate to America, to Australia, or to England, or wherever, to try and seek out a livelihood and an income. When there is an income off their shore. And like part of, uh, of, a, of a lot of allocations of quota has been historical track record. There's a historical track record that people are prepared to look from our island communities. That's going back generations, that's going back hundreds of years, where they lived and worked and, and reared their families on, those, on, the, on, on, on the islands and so forth. And part of the, that report, uh, Minister, recommendation 10, which is central to this bill, and it says the subcommittee recommends that the government examines the feasibility of the issuance of a heritage licence to, uh, to rural coastal and island communities. Such licence would optimally facilitate traditional fishing practices. And that is the, the purpose behind this, to, to, facil to fac facilitate that traditional practices, to facilitate an, uh, an, e an economy within the islands where people can survive and live there. Now, dangers have been, uh, been uh, pointed out. Uh, I spoke with uh, a minister already, and he's, the, he's obviously he hadn't read the bill, because what he said to me, he says, your bill, he says, means that somebody can stand at the end of the pier, waive his licence, and give his licence to somebody else to go back out fishing. And that man is a minister, a senior minister of the government. He hadn't even read the bill. So that's, that shows the kind of bull that goes on in here when people make judgments without even knowing the facts uh, of, what, of what, they're, what they're doing or what they're saying. So there we have it, Minister. There are dangers. Yes, there are dangers uh, uh, that have been pointed up. Granting special terms and conditions for any sector to cause migration of vehicles into the area. We have dealt with that on the bill. But we made it quite clear the person has to live on the island, has to be fishing on for a living on, on the island, has to be on board the vessel uh, that, it, that is fishing, uh, and, and, uh, and that is, is, is copper fastened there. And there is a fallback position if people want to look at it. And there's a prime example. If we look at how Trilibia Oyster Society works, you both have a license and you have a permit. So that makes sure you have to have both to fish it. And that that's a fallback position. If you have difficulty, you can instill that into, in, 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 in committee or in debate. But what I am saying, Minister, there is no reason, no reason whatsoever, that you and your government cannot support this bill. If you have difficulties with it in relation to, to tweaking, tweaking it or whatever, but the concept of what you stood over as chairperson within our committee, 
that I am very proud, and I am quite sure you are very proud to have been part of that report, because they have done an awful lot of good, and they gave advice to the viceless, the people who have been the forgotten communities. They gave advice to those. So that is what we have to do, Minister, here today, is support this bill, let it go to committee stage, and implement a report, a finally implement a report that has been agreed by all parties in this House. Thank you, Deputy First Minister. Deputy Doherty for speaking. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Count Corla. Um, I'd like to take, thank the deputies for their insight into the introduction of the bill and also for their references to the committee um, that I chaired, which I said at the outset at the time I was the only member of that committee that knew nothing about fishing. <laughs> I was, but I learned a lot. Um, and I do appreciate the co cooperation. I think Deputies Pringle and Ferris were both members of that committee at the time. Um, I feel this is a, a rather unusual situation, I should say. Deputy Creed, Minister Creed, rather, is away on a trade mission, so unavailable. And just to say at the outset that the legal advice that the Department has given is that the bill is not compatible with the EU law and the provisions of the Common Fisheries Policy. But I wish to reassure the House that the Government recognises the value and importance of maintaining vibrant rural and coastal communities. The Action Plan <coughs> for Rural Development. Realising our rural potential, potential launched last year as a whole of government strategy aimed at delivering change for people living and working in rural Ireland. And in the spherous, spherous fisheries in particular and seafood production, Minister Creed has been pleased to launch a range of schemes under Ireland's European Maritime and Fisheries Fund operational programme 2014 to 2020. The EMF programme is co-funded by the Exchequer and the EU and targets the developments of Ireland's seafood industry to support, in turn, uh, the communities reliant on the industry for incomes and jobs. And I have witnessed myself the projects supported by both the North, East and South East flags availing of the programme's com community-led fisheries local action group scheme. Over the duration of the EMF programme, the national flag scheme will deliver £12 million in funding to Ireland's coastal communities, an eightfold increase on the previous flag scheme. Over 200 project applications were received under this scheme in 2017. The final 153 were selected by the flag boards for their contribution to the community re rejuvenation, enterprise, innovation, job creation and skills enhancement across the fishing, aquaculture. Sorry. Um, we, we, we work on that, Minister. Okay. Planner. No, it's on the way. Thanks, Paul. Sorry, Minister. Will I continue? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, the direct practical nature of the projects, uh, the flags, the flag support is impressive and innovative projects like storage facilities for fishermen which improve working conditions at harbours and piers and the promotion of seafood through integration with tourism and community events. There are of course a range of other schemes which island fishermen and other inshore fishermen can avail of such as the dedicated inshore fisheries conservation scheme with its own €6 million Euro allocation. This scheme funds the popular lobster v-notching programme providing direct support to fishermen for engaging in the practice of demarking lobsters for conservation and putting them back to sea, to sea to support the long-term healthy stocks. I note a particular focus of the bill is small-scale coastal fishing, which is fishing vessels of less than 12 metres overall length with non-towed gear. And in fact, this is a feature of fishing in many areas, uh, many ports and harbours around our coast, not just offshore islands. Small-scale coastal fishing is a commercial activity from which a livelihood is derived. Under the programme, most of the grants available to small-scale coastal fishermen apply at a rate of 80 per cent of the cost of the investment. Small-scale coastal fishermen are already using Ireland's EMFF programme to invest at very low cost in selective fishing gear to purchase a wide variety of essential equipment on board and equipment on land, such as ice machines and freezers, to preserve and add value to the catch or indeed purchase their first fishing vessel. To date, over 50 per cent of all payments for the sustainable fisheries scheme have been to small-scale coastal fishermen. 
Border East Gawara is using the resources of the EMFF programme to provide technical and business advisory services to small-scale coastal fishermen and to assist this important part of Ireland's fishing fleet in the development of fishery management plans and environmental requirements. One of the responsibilities held by the Minister for Agriculture, Food and Marine is overseeing Ireland's role in the Common Fisheries Policy. The CFP is a set of rules for ma managing European fishing fleets and conserving fish stocks. Designed to manage a common resource, fisheries management is based on data and scientific advice and control measures to ensure that rules are applied fairly and complied with by all fishermen. A key component of CFP rules is, is the requirement that there is a stable and enduring balance between the fishing capacity and the fishing opportunities of each member state. And in this regard, the rules lay down requirements for each member state to license every commercial sea fishing boat in its fishing fleet. These requirements are legal, legally binding, binding on every member state and are set out in EU regulations. The bill before us proposes to create a system of licences for individual island fishermen. However, it cannot be divorced from, from the requirement to licence e each uh, sea fishing boat. Therefore, all this bill could hope to achieve is to put island fishermen in a uniquely bureaucratic situation of needing a personal licence and a sea fishing boat licence. Entry to and exit from Ireland's fishing fleet is managed through the capacity of each ves vessel wishing to be registered as an Irish sea fishing boat with an independent registrar general of sea fishing boats. Capacity in the form of gross tonnage and engine power has become a privately owned tradable asset that, with certain exceptions, may be sold, traded or realised as a financial asset on the tonnage market. It is not, I must stress, an asset owned by the Department or the licensing authority of sea fishing boats. We must be clear here that what we are talking about when we are talking about capacity is a privately owned asset by which fishing boat owners can exercise rights to fish on a commercial basis, a rights to earn a livelihood. The existing fishing licensing system for sea fishing boats is administered by the licensing authority of sea fishing boats on an independent basis, subject to criteria set out in legislation and ministerial policy directives. The Minister is legally precluded under Section 3.5 of the Fisheries Amendment Act 2003 from exercising any power or control in relation to individual cases or a group of cases with which the licensing authority is or may be concerned. Licenses issued by the licensing authority are issued to owners of the sea fishing boats to license the vessel concerned. The owner may be an individual, a partnership or a corporate body, or co-op for that matter. There is also an independent appeal system available to anyone dissatisfied with the decision of the licensing authority. So I think it's important uh, to point out that the existing licensing legislation and procedures are available to and apply to islanders engaged in commercial sea fishing. Island fishermen therefore already have access to li a licensing regime which recognises their commercial sea fishing activities, their right to earn a living from the sea on the same basis as others in this fishing industry. There are a range of further complexities in how the Irish sea fishing fleet is managed, including licensing conditions and segmentation. I don't propose to go into, take up the time of the House going into these details, but just to say that there are restrictions on the nature of stocks which may be caught, the fishing gear which may be used, or the areas in which fishing may be undertaken. The Bill, as I read it, proposes to confer the responsibility on the Minister to issue licences to any person either habitually or ordinarily resident on offshore islands to engage in fishing in an narrowly defined way. The Bill does not set out how residency would be determined, nor is it clear how the proposed application process would deal with applications by corporate bodies such as cooperatives and partnerships, which come under the legal term person. I would have concerns then that the bill would, if enacted, be open to exploitation by those with very little fishing heritage or island connections. The bill does not define what is meant by the term offshore islands, and it seems to presume that islands have a six-mile territorial limit. Many of the islands around the coastline are contained within the baselines of the territorial seas of the state, and these include the Blasket Islands, the Aran Islands, Inish Boffin, Clare Island off Mayo and Aran Moor Island off Donegal. This bill sets out an intention to create an untransferable community island quota 
It is a long-standing government policy that Ireland's fish quotas are a national asset. Ireland's fish quota management system is designed to ensure the best possible spread of both between fishing vessel operators and in terms of take-up of quotas throughout the year, having regard to fishing patterns and market conditions. Quotas for species which can be obtained using small-scale coastal fishing gear, such as mackerel and herring, already have a set-aside allocations for the inshore fishing sector. Key inshore stocks are not limited by a quota arrangement, for instance, lobster crab species, which are, I think, what the Deputy Kenny was referring to in terms of artisan fish, which are the mainstay of many small boats. The Bill provides no means of, re of review, repeal, surrender or withdrawal of a licence and provides for no sanctions, offences or enforcement powers to oversee the proposed licensing regime. So these deficiencies are, are de demonstrate this Bill is, is not um, you know, fit to attempt, uh, attempt to address the concerns of the island uh, fishermen or any other community dependent on fishing. The government has made conscious strides to create more inclusive and responsive um, policies to support the development com commu and develop communities which are reliant on fishing and seafood production for valuable incomes. It was the government which introduced the fisheries tax credit um, in the budget of 2016, recognising the difficult nature of working in the fishing sector, something which I think was also formed part of the recommendation from the committee's report. When I was chair of the committee, it was evident that there was no representative body specifically focused on the inshore sector and needs of its communities. It was this government which moved to address this long-standing challenge by creating inshore fisheries uh, forums to give inshore fishing communities an effective say in policy making. The National Inshore Fisheries Forum, supported by its base of six regional forums, has given the inshore fishing sector its first dedicated platform to propose and have a meaningful input into decisions, decisions such as access to Ireland's fishing quotas, use of funds from the EMFF and the conservation measures for, for in-store stocks, all of which affect how the sector can operate. I understand that the island fishermen have representatives on four of the six regional inshore fishery forums and also on the National Inshore Fisheries Forum, with whom Minister Creed regularly meets. I am, of course, not surprised that island fishermen have, and their communities have recognised the opportunities being, of being involved in this process, and it brings the sector at, uh, how the, uh, shows, demonstrates how the sector can contribute to a better long-term future for their, for their sector. In summary, this government is committed to supporting coastal and rural communities, including through the provision of direct financial supports. Ireland's EMFF operational programme is focused on the development of the seafood sector and is a critical part of our commitment. And I would urge all small-scale coastal fishermen and offshore island, on offshore islands and otherwise to avail of the programme's uh, supports. I would like to stress that the existing legislation in this area provides independent, uh, an independent licensing process for sea fishing boats and contributes to managing Ireland's fishing fleet within EU rules. The existing legislation and procedures are available to and apply to islanders already. This bill would conflict with the existing legislation and procedures and would create more restrictive licenses for oil islanders than are currently avail available to them. And this is the reason why the government can't support this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's a long way from Wexford, but uh, I have some links to uh, Aaron Moore Island off the coast of Donegal. Uh, my parliamentary assistant, uh, Chris Oonan, has been going there in the summers since he was 12, and his girlfriend's family are from the island, and many sets of tyres have been worn out in the pursuit of that woman. To say islands have been ignored by the state would be a serious understatement. Aaron Moor is the fifth most populated coastal island in Ireland, with a population of 469 in the 2016 census. But in 1981, its population was 803, nearly a 50% decrease. The current unemployment rate is 52% for males and 40% for females, and almost one in four of families on the island are lone parent families. This deprivation is not unconnected to the fact that fishing has all but ceased, besides for a few non-quota species. 
I am just going to read some words from Seamus Bonner, a fisherman from Aaron Moore and Secretary of the Irish Islands Marine Resource Organisation. He says, seasonal fishing has always been key to the way of life on the islands. Taking fish when they were at their best and allowing them to recover in the off-season is the island way. Fitting in with the natural way of things comes second nature to islanders. In more recent times, a different way of thinking has come about. Bigger is better is the order of the day. The outcome of this has been bad for island communities who depend on fishing to make a living and allow islanders to stay on the islands. Instead of a varied fishery, islanders are forced by the existing quota system to fish for non-quota species such as crab and lobster all year round. This is not only unsustainable for the islands and puts, pressure, puts massive pressure on the few fisheries we have access to. It cannot last. The bigger is better policy has failed us. Small changes can have big effects on the islands. We see the results in our school numbers and our young people having to leave the islands for work. Islanders have recognised the need for change in our way of thinking on fisheries for a long time now. We have organised first regionally, then nationally. Islands from Donegal, Mayo, Galway and Cork have come together to work out a way forward. The Joint Director Subcommittee Report on Fisheries in 2014, which this bill draws its ideas from, chart the way through EU and national rules. The Common Fisheries Policy set by the EU recognises that islands are different and need special consideration and support. It is written into the CFP foundations. Small offshore islands, islands which are dependent on fishing should, where appropriate, be especially recognised and supported in order to enable them to survive and prosper. The Islands Heritage Licence Bill, being debated today, provides for this support. It allows fair access to the CFP quota species so that island fishers can fish seasonally in tune with natural cycles and the weather. It provides for low-impact island boats to earn an income for island families, which in turn will support the islands all along our coast. Small-scale fishing is the way forward for a fairer commons, common fisheries policy. Now, I come from a county that doesn't have much in the way of islands. Uh, we have Banna Island, which isn't really an island, and uh, the Salties in the Kirks. In any case, we don't have island fishermen, but we do have lots of fishermen of various shapes and sizes, and some, like the island fishermen, have seen their tradition and culture slowly eroded by many different factors. We have a salmon net fishermen on our river in the southeast. They used to build traditional cots, which they then used primarily to fish and sometimes to race in regattas. Whenever the season would allow, they used traditional net fishing practices to catch maybe one or two salmon a day. These traditional fishermen were one of the first to get the bullet when Inland Fisheries Ireland decided to tackle the decline of the North Atlantic salmon stock. The major industrial polluters got a pass to warm the waters around our island and further afield. The agricultural industry got a pass for eutrophication and water extraction on our rivers. And the coastal salmon farmers got a pass to spread sea lice and forget to report salmon escapes. There's a tail race operating on the Slaney, where salmon and trout get trapped on a daily basis. It's the biggest problem facing salmon stocks on the Slaney, and Inland Fisheries Ireland have pulled out hundreds of fish on a few occasions in recent years. But the same authority can't tell me how many times they've inspected this tail race because they don't disaggregate inspections. In any case, my point is simple. The small traditional fish catchers on the islands or on the rivers were taken out of the equation. The major fish killers continue to operate with immunity and in many cases they are subsidised to continue doing what they are doing. This bill looks to protect a small but important group of fishermen, and I welcome that. And while legislation can dictate that certain groups be allowed fish, it can't guarantee fish. The journey cycle of a salmon is one of the most incredible feats of nature known to man, and the obstacles in the North Atlantic salmon faces to survive and spawn are incredible. The biggest of these obstacles are created by man, and until we address these factors that lead to declines in fish stocks, bills such as this one, while important and are kind of secondary in the scheme of things.
There are also many traditional coastal fishermen in Wexford and East Waterford, in Dunmore, Duncannon and Cheap Pint, who rejected the salmon hardship scheme. When the government paid for a buyout of Irish salmon drifters, licences not everyone sold out. Some people in good faith waited for stocks to recover. This was 11 years ago. It will be 12 years this summer. So much of what I have already said about the island fishermen and their fishing practices apply to these small-scale coastal fishermen too. We seem to punish the smaller fishermen and reward the big boats and super trawlers. As I have already said, conservation of our fish stocks is vital, but the coastal fishermen, the traditional fishermen in Wexford and Waterford, can still offer a sustainable fishing future. Most of their boats are under 10 metres in length, and these fishermen only spend about half a year on the water. Might the Minister support affordable, comprehensive or polyvalent licences and capacity for these men who have been waiting for too long in recognition of their patience and their loss of earnings? Will the Minister at least meet with the traditional coastal fishermen in Wexford? Wexford is consistently shown to be one of the most deprived counties in Ireland. Again, not unlike the economic situation islanders find themselves in. Surely we need to consider how the lives of the people in these communities have been further devastated by the salmon licence buyout and lack of improvement in the salmon stock. All fishermen, be they island or coastal or river, would be served a hell of a lot better if this government started to tackle the real problems regarding fish stocks and climate change. Thank you. Wallace. Now our next contributors are Deputy Eamon O'Keeve and Deputy Pat Cope Gallagher. No, but what? We don't know what to do now. Well, but... Well, then that they go in shock there. Till the armor to my cap. Yeah, it's in the difference. The toilet could have shifted the lower and actually thrown it. I like it. She is in show now, Gamach, and Bertha de Variant. No, it took me show on two scrums. Yeah, it took me on two scrums, I don't know what's going on here. What? Gurmar is a good thing. Camera, Gurman, do you more of them? We ask in the rinna, Trunona. We threw him Ganada Star to Honda Construction Shot Trunona. As a account, I guess, Rajas, the Ori Drake Green, Ho, I guess. Fis Amsa Gachasha in the Mioni, the rate of Natur Scholar Shalink, is just a gushta. Maradorche Haining a tooth near a modern Tishkin ticket, and the Pobble Kush Costa, as the Pobble Lilanda, as Kahamera, a dead and frocious, which you could hold of the Dinner Behele de Gushta, as Harvey Takul. Is Quibnut on fresh in the law and Yakama de Mark? Gehinisir is shown in the Tour of Scala Shaw. Gehiven Huma de Marker and Nestlan and Wagin Chain, because we are in here to write her a mod. Arrow Amshra on. Chang and the Bun Hocher, if you steer the Tour of Scala Shaw, now go mock dash, ignore public cush, coaster. Last of one to the Wadig team Pilotto, the Gulligisco. Nila hai glomachai agus partai na wain akla hai chulikin alias ka tasa varag a timpel er na haitu chai shok. Nish, kern si ant, bin ant peish am a gulni e lag na maach oraid a hagans orani staid. Bin oraid aana vien si giri swinu na faib nir fad as ni a reitik na faib nir. Bin already alone, the ravines, Jarka Difru, Jarta, an Ibsha on, was an Ibshu down, a Tati Dereto, a Delaine Avras and Shatruna, will go warlock that are not a discreti of Canada and Shan Yo. I hear that to the kind to Radigan to Gaha and Quillahort Shakazarisco. I have my house a cony arena as an Arika team pillared. Agus tradition ag do winter ve giskoch. Ni vach ein wa ve tarskin di tarskin rodi elochet. Ve he giri gal a giskoch. Nish ni shocking. Let's run the door to chat to Wallace. 
camera kanyano rewa kana hilai aga dur vi mishman era ka hakid million euro er infrastructure kana hilai ta sama khinna ka moran ni rain togros kin million kati ha o khin a ka ho shin ignam shin ske fa wo chin ta wakht ma ma ham pa ma hog mit ilan wine at a ghost in his man. Nirin came to get a bada galon. Haricha. And the Nilachin Kurtoiko came a Halawur. As Marshin got tradition to Nero and quote to Akko. Nero the Bajako, Agas Nieta Gave. Few and in the seer. Could you have an to Sova to Bad or Gelkangatan? I could feel the Lord on your hand, as Godog for Sheena as she gave. Being out of a bad Farentire at the Hortonun Ganishman, the Gamasha Sova to Sonoya. I guess Martian Nero Sheri of Feral to Ernihilan and Qui Arino and Quota. Mahogam would Arring War. The Mishman out of a plan in the Aretu because we the Begna Cray, the Colonel Cave and Ronley, and Cave is Moo Eastly at the Nilain. Has to shake a gear. Rather like a gaffer cream roar, a gas in the Nilain now. Gabano and Cad got a geese good like a bloodline, a new Kurutata night. Scumover and Nilain in us. In the Syrian in Shman, in the Autumn War, in the Hillanella Machon Gosta, in the Bano Eshinob, Bano Gulorhoib. As Kang and the Rodia Tatarlo Awar, the Gulanomaka Brew attacked on the part time, as in the Gloma. Nish, Adestite, Glakam Leshna Feti and Billa, a country to die in Maratosha, a Hakan and Adlatta. Tossat and chorus and shot. Nuri Kado forgot to make Kintig my more looks to die to hear in Villashaw, because I'm with the Takalish in Villashaw. I got stored with the Shin like Shin Fein on Gidla. I got Sainta's Adam, Snockwill and Realtors, the Takalish or Harlogger, Torskal Trasforti of Yen Shaw. I can know it a Gado for him, Bill Eddie Daddy came and shot. Fina Realty tossed a dial in ish. He is not going to be able to do it. He is not going to be able to do it. He is not going to be able to do it. He is not going to be able to do it. He is not going to be able to do it. He is not going to Get a gun real to Skuna Horshoing, let Bill and his Sarah Hurley Hale, a Hinkir do Ella Yanakuje, but can show this techno lagging, been a valley than a illumit five in a tonsha, a haro. Nish Nirakam Lesh, couple of other shots, a Shaneski San Vino Yana, a Dilan of Gulboon Honier. Agasa San Kate Hain. As Kumalish in the Hash to go in the Bad Fadentoyrachta, and then I remark, I guess Nadine Kurt and Chervi Sher Gaharing, and then I remark, Ked is ill on the Khan. I guess the Klarna Votorion. As Marshin Tasha had of the Aiski Samvi Nuyana, Ked Ilonok, as Ked in the Hill and the Taigest, Marditi eat the Animnu, Similla. As Mana Jerem, the Glor Five Nikurian Shah, Glorified the cafe to Rachel. Up he he live and rather shall now go hurt the neck and she's a tortured Tommy the night show. As Cain a ballet or fad go fade them link cut an eye, shocks are all Tommy the Rahum show. Angus Kid and Ballet go fade the link also, they go fade the cut of vine. Nish to catch all war a wine. Could it? Chaos a juk hook and quote truck at the rudish in her fad. I made a hastuch on the hill on the line of bide vegas in the vehicle counter bide water to the counter bide vegas 
the murder. A maid quota has to go for sure that money is going to buy it all worried. The Irish wife, as a narrow, well, be sure, Martasha, Martasha, now our ring to Yana and have us in the Jerusha. As Martian, not of a quota got ring to reach, could a major relative, could a little beggar, my man of Dort make a tooth, now has to come rudder, better than Elano, the winter route. A gift of the Farriga Timpler and Nilai. To Brano Makarawariga Hulala Agus Kosk Omlan Ag Art Golagisko Bahi Ilomot Kinel Iosko Monchain as Gan and Tarigadagot. The Goylagas and Amarga Oskilte Lesh the Kadunishagas no coat to the Kanacht and Frise Warigi. Aristot, Vachme Giriart, Golarash Egda Irish Shinshruch, Azaralesh, Will Jarman Mordinta, Ege and Shanyo, a Kurinadon and Villasho, as Gumarawad Kurlesh and Ober into Kurina Tussa, Machahir Kerigoshte, a Reta and Turuskalcha, as in Darikim Gun Villasho, a Kadu. I was ligging to go to Rash, a rise against Camilla Sabrosius. She said, I'm playing Rave Rachtichter, a Vachistis Augusta. They go Jukukmud, a Valak Kui Kart, then a Garth of Bunnusaka Hort, go Fubbin the Nilain. Is Garg my idea, Mach, Igdini, not willing on Chachter good Achfani Hain, Fekmud and the Cricket. I was fecking with that a warrior. I had a start. I will toss a gull of her son, no nini, Maravito. No, will to go to the coronel than a public. I'm popular arrived at Tussock, a person that could deal in her to Hon, Tigam, Nahorza Hitche, and Kinnisha Yuna. A cheering heart got a rash, a ganadi shinshru, a zaralesh. Nian for Jarmut Ersho. Okay, Gary Mila Mahagat the Hyakta. Now Turts and Ardiv and made uh Boyle Tigiri Lowert, I guess made Amit have fall kick big goring of uh Kurum Glishan uh and uh Chakto Kleve or uh Parame Shinasha San Arav no to Mesha Kanch. And Kedal Chase Boy from Morago or Mesha Kasim La Hulaki and Chakto Kiev because uh Margaret Murphy or Mahani or the Chakti Alam at uh our part is a torch, Lam Taki Don Bella Shaw, August Molam Gomor, it should occur and Bella Shaw Likela. August Anoia, Falchim Rev Nenade Tan Shaw, on the Nellan Egsila Tan Shaw in Gallery, as Tim Dini and Chen, O Ellen Hori, O Aaron Moore, August Na Ellen Ella, Ama on Costa, Teresh Torres Fade Ayanu, O Na Nellan, Guji and Chur Moore, August on Chur Moore, and Chalk Go, G Blacklea, August Ni Fedre Shan Ayanu, and Ain La Wine. So, Shan Kotabak to Satashe, O Shrade Gold Shitson and Shaw, Ni knew. No, no, the shits in a chart and shaw, her in the blint of father, a gary, a brewer her on ya, con cudgel yoffa, I was going cudgel a cast in a hiscary, er, in a little bugger. August Anoia, James Harashkiji, you jack shock with three. Anur and Blaine, who my genius ja, co fobble and a contam shan, I was an ish, enters New Harpa. Agus an Asian ni jag akwatri nur kardu an CFP a vaim eganamshan. So I, I think of 1973 when we became members of the European Union, and there's no doubt about it that we benefited greatly by our membership of the European Union. And as to be seen, the major infrastructures, uh, in addition to that, free access to uh, 500 million people for our goods, our services, and our people. But I do believe, and I will repeat what I've said on numerous occasions here in the DAL and in the European Parliament, that the fishing industry paid too great a price for our membership of the European Union. Because at that time, those who negotiated uh, our uh, membership of the Union uh, were of the view that the quotas which would be become available uh, in 1983 were sufficient to allow the industry to develop. 
Uh, and of course, we have found to our regret since that that is not it. The key uh, that was agreed at that time, when we get some 4.8 in total uh, of the quotas in Europe and some 21 on the larger scale, or if it's boar fish, some 90 per cent on the larger scale, uh, it wasn't sufficient to allow the industry to develop. But going back to the islands, uh, as I said in Irish, I fully support the bill, uh, as does uh, my party. And I fully support it in the measures contained within the bill uh, as proposed before the House today. Uh, this bill is, is drafted, and it may not be perfect, and I believe that those uh, in Sinn Féin who drafted the bill will be the first to admit that. I have never seen a bill in my years, going back to 1981 here, where a second stage bill went through the House without any amendments at all, even coming from the government. The government amend their own bills, and of course they will have an opportunity to amend this bill. We may have an opportunity to amend the bill, but we do want, Concorda, we want an opportunity to get this bill to uh, committee stage. Uh, and I do believe that the government should not oppose this. Uh, and I'll go into detail uh, as we go along. I think it's wrong of the government to, because it's blatantly obvious, with the support that this bill is getting from the various parties and the various individuals, that it will get through. Uh, and I would plead with the minister, there will have been an opportunity, Peter, on this, and when the vote is called and when the vote is taken on Thursday of next week, to have a rethink. Not alone is uh, Minister Doyle here, but there's a minister here with responsibility for the islands as well. Uh, and while it's uh, a marine bill, uh, it's also, uh, as he would say himself, it's future future with the islands. And therefore, uh, I believe that uh, there has to be joined up thinking here. Uh, the, it provides, this would provide young people, and, that's, and those who are not so young, with an opportunity to secure a livelihood for themselves and their families uh, on uh, the islands uh, off our coast. We must remember, and I'm very familiar with many of the islands, having represented the Donegal Islands all my years here in the Dal, and represented the islands off the coast of Galway and Mayo uh, during my time in the European Parliament. But in those islands, there's no alternative source of employment. There's an opportunity for fishing and for tourism, and of course, uh, particularly linked to heritage. And this is a heritage bill. So we want to give those people and their families uh, an opportunity to make a living uh, on the islands and on their own doorstep, remembering where there we have the most prolific fishing grounds in all of Europe, not just in Ireland, but in all of Europe, and they are not in a position to be able to avail uh, of those uh, prolific, uh, prolific fishing grounds. It recognises the traditional rights of island fishing communities and it follows on from the recommendation of the Joint Committee, which reference has been made, and we have to be positive about this, giving credit to Minister Andrew Doyle, who chaired that committee. Uh, and of course, I would just refer to the um, recommendations from that, uh, and time doesn't permit me to go into detail, but others have referred, uh, have referred to them. Let me remind the government, let me remind the ministers that we're not taking this step here today. I go back to 2011, when I was a member of the European Parliament, when we were reviewing the common fisheries policy, and I played a lead role on behalf of the party that I was in at that time, on behalf of, of ALDE, and I secured agreement, not just within ALDE, not just within the European Parliament, but I secured it at the trialogue when we discussed it within the Council the Parliament and the Commission. And let me remind the House who was President of the, uh, par of the Commission at that time of the Council, none other than the President Tanisha, who was Minister for Agriculture, and he was very supportive of me at that time. Uh, and I will just read what was agreed in Europe. And then we're saying here, well, if we agree to this, then we're running into difficulties with Europe. Europe have agreed, and this, uh, let me quote, small offshore islands which are dependent on fishing should, where appropriate, be especially recognised and supported in order to enable them to survive and prosper." Unquote. That's not the words. They were my words, but they were adopted by the European Parliament and the trialogue. So they're written into the common fisheries policy. So to suggest that we may not be, uh, that we not be compliant with Europe makes uh, no sense. Joint Committee, of course, they also uh, said something similar to that. Uh, so, 
Of course, there will be amendments. But let's have the opportunity, Minister, and Ministers, uh, to uh, amend uh, the, whatever is necessary in this bill. And it may be said that ah, this is not compliant with European legislation. I believe, if it's not, let us insert the necessary amendments that make it compliant. And we will work together. And if the Minister wants to establish a small working group to uh, uh, table amendments, then all of us will be uh, very happy to do that. I believe, and the Minister says it's possibly, and I'm only proud of it, and it may not be in conformity with EU, EU legislation, but make it conform with it. That's what we're here for, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to do that. Uh, can I also uh, talk about the residency of the islands? Now, it's suggested in the bill that you have to be the holder of the licence, you have to be on board the boat. Then that's easy to amend. I mean, what happens if someone takes ill on the day and there's two or three others on the boat? Those are little amendments that we can deal with, but I don't think that there should be obstacles uh, to uh, moving uh, this bill. We will give you, Minister, and we will give the government the necessary tools to amend this bill. And how can we do that? We can do it by giving this bill an overwhelming vote of confidence on Thursday of next week. And whether the government support it or not, but I would like to think the government would support it. But if they don't, I believe that every member of this House, whether a member of a party, a group or independence, will uh, support uh, this bill. So I know the time is limited. And I'm delighted, can I say before I conclude, because I've sat here as last John Corla chairing many, many primary, uh, many, many private members' bills. And I haven't seen as many who have taken an interest and remember it's Thursday evening. And I think this is a fair indication of the commitment of all of the parties and all of the individuals who are here and will uh, use uh, the uh, full time. So with those few concluding remarks, let me suggera MP and Aaron Rail to six Nahari Tan Shaw, uh Fregwork Aku Harkyon Rinamara, Agus Nagelta Desnell Sminu Yanawa Shaw, Agus Kenna Aglaku, Gan Votel Agonya. And Bellisha, a third so Tawak the Shan, the Munch and the Nellan, I was not in the Tan Shahar and Gallery, a Janu Enediat, her son, the Danish and Kermag. The Kermag of the Hapt and the Kain Torielli, Kate Kain Torielli, now and Chuck the Maureen O'Sullivan, Thomas Pringle, as Catherine Connolly. Deno made yeah. on dinner. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so while I represent Dublin Central, I'm speaking on the Island Fisheries Bill because of a very long association and relationship I have with one of those islands, and that's along Clara in County, uh, County Cork, and also from visits to many of the islands. So I know and I can value the benefits of island life, which I've experienced over many years. There's a special, unique island atmosphere and a very special, unique way of life, not to mention scenery and natural beauty of the islands, peace, tranquility and also very obvious the wide range of skills that islanders have had to develop over the years because they do depend on each other so much and you see that community spirit. Now I'm not looking at islands through rose tinted glasses because I also know the difficulties and the pressures, the practicalities of living on islands and the extra costs particularly of transport of goods and animals in and out of the islands. The way islands can be cut off due to adverse weather conditions and also the effect of those weather conditions on the infrastructure, the roads on the islands. So it's vital that islanders can make a living, a viable income, in order to stay on the islands. Otherwise, we're going to see an increase in the outward flow to cities and abroad. Because we know island populations are dropping, so the viability of island life is under threat, and we could do without any more Blasket Island scenarios. Islanders have traditionally depended on farming and fishing, but life has been particularly difficult for Ireland fishermen, and the bill goes some way towards addressing those difficulties. Now, I'm going to use some of, the, of my time that's left to me, to read the words of an island fisherman whom I know, a young man, who has set out the reality of life for him as a fisherman. Now he's been fishing all of his life as a, as a youngster and then right up to an adult when he did have his own purpose-built 10-metre inshore potter. He had invested heavily in that, he had taken out a mortgage on that, but he was forced to downsize to a 20-foot fibreglass boat a number of years ago. And part of the downsizing was because to buy a licence to allow him to fish in an area where he had been fishing all his life and an area where generations of his family had also fished.
He believes in the importance of regulating access to the fishing industry, otherwise there would be a free-for-all, with unlicensed operators depleting the stocks. Now, for his 20 years fishing, he did try to incorporate conservation measures into his fishing activities. Measures like V-notching programs, minimum size limits, maximum size limits for lobsters and brown crab, and also voluntary closed seasons. So what he was doing was sustainable, and he felt that that was vital in order to protect the, stock, the stocks and ensure viability. And what he says is, what's not sustainable, of course, is the current licensing system where inshore and part-time island fishermen have to pay huge amounts for a license. And that is preventing any young island fishermen from even considering getting a future in the industry, which would otherwise enable them to make a living on the island. The current licensing structure does not fit with the inshore way of fishing. It was designed for the bigger boats where their ability to catch fish was measured by the amount of power, also known as kilowatts. And due to those boats becoming even bigger, there's a scarcity of kilowatts and even to buy one now could cost anything around a thousand euro. Now I know the kilowatts is another, another aspect, but the point he's making is that these small island fishermen are being forced to compete against the large multinational fishing companies needs to buy the kilowatts. His point is, is that the government has a responsibility to prevent our natural resources from being, uh, becoming effectively privatised by these monopolies. Because in most other countries in the world, small inshore boats have a permit that allows them to fish, which is not tied to engine power, and so they don't have to compete with the multinational cartels to buy access to the natural resources. His cur currently, the 20-foot boat he currently fishes, it's too small to safely fish around the Island, which is eight miles offshore. He has to push it to their, her limits in order to make it profitable. Then the fact that he has to steam eight miles to the mainland to land his catch and collect bait, often in poor conditions. Uh, the current licence won't allow him to upgrade and, of course, the costing there. Barlesh Fonawinch Erin Ilon, Parta Glockus and Fubble, Agus Lanawinch Raig Ek Iskarok, Octoshi Imaha Inish Asan Ilon, Asa Avalia Gukush. But while the man is special to a horse, then a hill on some great talk. Agus am taku agus an taku low lesson and shliana will she a glana winter ag lesson grailga con and grailga a command bio. Now the bill is going some way towards addressing the issues. It was disappointing what the minister said earlier, but I do hope that having gone go to committee stage, that the issues can be addressed. Gramag, no, you took five. Thank you. John Cole, I'm sharing time with Deputy um, Connolly. Jane Jay, Nomid? Okay, all right. John uh, Cole. Yeah. Yeah. Cole, uh, I would like to start by congratulating the island fishermen for sticking with the fight that they have, they have started, and particularly to be parochial about it, the fishermen from Donegal itself. Ken Corder, we started a struggle through the committee in the last stall, and I must say it was thanks to the work of the chairman, Andrew Doyle, that this managed to progress to the stage that a report was published. And I know he would like to support this bill, but he had to speak against it today, um, and that's the anomalies, I suppose, have been in government at this stage. But um, the report that he was the chairman of was very much in favour of this, this, the, this issue. And I think it is a sad indictment that after all the work carried out by Dáil committees, that reports fall on deaf ears within departments. I am not just single, singling out the Department of Agriculture on this, but I think it is true across all departments and for many committee reports which end up lying idle. So that is why we are here today with a bill to try and achieve what should have been achieved when the report was published first. What is left out of this process is the island fishermen themselves, who have vested their trust in the Oireachtas to deliver on what is a reasonable demand. How many fishermen have been pushed further into debt by our, our inaction? How many have left fishing entirely? And indeed, how many have left our islands because we have been unable to carry this process through for them? I believe that we all lose when someone has to leave an island or gives up traditional fishing, particularly when it is down to the inaction of the government. The Island Fisheries Heritage Licence Bill 2017 would go some way to showing that the Arachnids is actually going to stand up for fishermen and what should be their rights. This bill on its own will not go the way of reversing the downward trend in island fishing populations, but it would help empower communities to further fight for their own survival, and that is what we should be aiming to achieve at the least here today in this House. The Joint Subcommittee on Fisheries, in its report promoting sustainable rural coastal and island communities, and in its final recommendation stated that greater support for communities be provided. 
<coughs> in recommendation 10, the report recommends that the, the government examine the feasibility of the issuance of heritage licences to rural, coastal and island communities, and such licences would ultimately facilitate traditional fishing practices. I think that the committee goes on to say it all when it states that, and I quote directly from the report, regard to inshore fisheries, the subcommittee has some concerns. It would appear that plans advanced to develop the management of inshore fisheries now appear to be in abeyance. It would also appear that there is a paucity of data, in particular, to in, in particular to inshore fisheries in the context of fishing and the circumstances under the 10 metre LOA category of vessel, the bulk of the fleet. It is clear that it is upon this category that many of the communities which are the focus of this report depend to a significant degree, economically, socially and demographically, and even culturally in the onshore fisheries. In this context, the subcommittee asked the question as to what degree the government is in a position to plan for the future of this industry and, by extension, these communities. It appears that there is a very fragmented governance of the maritime sector, so the subcommittee also queries whether other simpler models should not be examined by the government. I think that says it all. And we would need to take a long look at how our department governs the issue of fisheries and find ways to reform this. But it certainly seems to me that it's definitely broken. The bill itself, I believe, is in line with the common fisheries policy. Article 20 states, small offshore islands which are dependent on fishing should, where appropriate, be especially recognised and supported in order to enable them to survive and pros prosper. If it was ever appropriate, this is it. Indeed, in section 19 of the common fisheries policy, it also states that member states should have endeavoured to give preferential access for small-scale artisanal or coastal fishermen, which further strengthens the support for island fishermen. Now, I'm no friend of the EU, but at least in this case the EU is standing up for island fishermen, which we aren't doing here. I know that the island community have looked around Europe as well to see if this model is anywhere else, and have found similar models already working. One in particular is in Galicia and Spain, which is, this model takes heavily from. So the government cannot say that this does not exist and it is too difficult, which, which they probably will try and say here today. The island communities have done great work in getting this issue this far and hopefully we can get them the rest of the way. But it would be remiss of me to not to mention the wider coastal communities and fishermen who are, who are also suffering, who I feel this model would help as well, for the very same reasons. The one drawback that they have is that they don't have a distinct area and that an, island has, that an island has and in a lot of cases are working almost alone. I believe that they should be included in this arrangement and indeed the Oireachtas Committee did as well. But island communities are not properly represented and that should not make them any, their issue any less important. It just makes it harder for them to get a hearing. I would just like to finish by saying well done to EMRO in getting this far. And I hope that this Oireachtas does not let them down, and by extension, that the Department will actually honour the recommendations of the committee report and respond to the express wishes of the Oireachtas. Thank you. I will be back at the end of the August uh, um, Garamila Mahaku the Rawlish and Fain as such they are hurt us corner dala. Um, Neil Chefwerfa. Gone doubt, I can speak on the fiber, I can see look to know, I can see look to a eyebrow ma er level and khushta. I can er no tashe boniha er on tourist call on ko khushta. I can see honey can tourist call chin ma he me anor gavi le se karijig chin kera glino hin. I can chuki me rash ma ta an tamagum gaji an tourist call chin. I can see na multi a ta an chin ta shit in ta kerfad for your gear ni karu i vai mead. I ta ni I can see fihe multi a guest. I can see ta an bilisha boni a gopriva er mala a je. Agus Ernoi ta an bille a wadni shrienta na an mala, mar luan che luan an bille ne hiskeri a ta in a choni er ilan. Agus nil ni luan chid karbe ne dini a ta in a choni er a mohir in eken a fariga. So ta she harve shrienta. Agus ni higam ken fa na quel an realtis ked fin ked ti fear den villa sha. Minister. I'm fully behind this bill. It is certainly not a perfect bill. It has problems, but they can be worked out at the level of the committee. And indeed, it's based on your own report, and you have been praised, and rightly so, and I've taken the trouble of downloading it and reading it. And four years ago, you stood over this 
of what I would say is a radical document. Unfortunately, from what I can see, none of the 29 recommendations have been implemented. But today, in particular, we're looking at recommendation 10. And your subcommittee recommended that the government examine the feasibility of the issuance of heritage licences to rural, coastal and island communities. Such licences would optimally facilitate traditional fishing practices in conjunction, and so on and so on. This bill is a lot more uh, restrictive than that recommendation, and it's simply referring to fishermen habitually living on islands. It's also limited to the nature of the licence, which is a heritage licence, which is non-transferable, and the boat size is extremely small. Now, I look at your response here, and I actually thought through Agam, in our era, Mar we to Ked fin Ked to fear than Turis Golsha, Augustinish Tatui the He, Augustinil to an Antakio the Horch than Billish Rientasha, Vic Misha Exul Le Billa Awadnis Letna on Realtis, August Gohoria Wetcha, De War and Mage Ibra. Rinatu Saturis Golsha. So, Minister, I feel sorry for you today in a sense that you've done tremendous work. And you have come up with very good recommendations, one of them extremely radical, which lifted my heart, I have to say. And that recommendation was recommendation six. There is a clear, there is a clear need for a statutory financial community gain with relation to agriculture and marine energy projects. Of course, this never happened. I don't think any of the recommendations have ever been implemented. But in relation to the specific recommendation of 10, which you stood behind, as I said, this bill is much more restrictive than your own actual recommendation. And you can't even, you can't even agree with that bill with the view to changing it at committee level. And then um, an old adage comes to mind of the devil quoting scriptures for his own purpose. And I certainly don't attribute to you any of those uh, satanic uh, characteristics. However, you are quoting the common fisheries policy to suit yourself and you are ignoring the preamble which has already been quoted by my colleague, paragraph 20, small offshore islands which are dependent on fishing should, where appropriate, be especially recognised and supported in order to help them, uh, enable them to survive and prosper. And there are, other, there are other references to helping islands have a sustainable life. And then you talk about the difficulties with habitually resident. But the family law legislation has many, many uses of the word habitually resident without any problem for the purposes of judicial separation and divorces and other very important issues in family law. So, as I said, I finish by saying you're in a very difficult position, but that is the time to show leadership. When one is in a difficult you, position, Deputy. that is the time to show leadership. Can I, can I just say to the House that we have eight members, eight further members offering. If everybody would maybe reduce their contributions by a minute or two, we get everyone in. Deputy Penrose. There's no waiting, so I'll take my ten minutes. And as, as uh, Deputy Geller says, this is a bill which a lot of us have stayed around to contribute to. I think it, uh, it emphasised the importance of the bill. Uh, and I compliment Sinn Féin uh, party on bringing it forward uh, and, and making a very significant contribution in this area. This bill is about the future of Ireland communities, small fishermen, and to signal to these people, our people, that they are not being forgotten. It is clear to everyone, to everyone that small-scale island fishermen have struggled for survival. And in a brilliant article last July that I read by Lorna Siggins, it was focused upon Ireland's islands and how the offshore islands were fighting depopulation and neglect. They felt very abandoned at times, and I know the story of one such fisherman that a lot of people would know that I don't know, John O'Brien from the Aramore Islands, Aramore Islands, Donegal, which one she wrote about, which neatly encapsulated why this bill is so important, and where it has a clear objective of formalising the recognition in Ireland for small offshore islands that are dependent on fishing. He clearly struggled after himself and a number of other fishermen in Aramore Island refused to surrender their wild salmon licences when the ban on diff netting came into operation in 2007. He refused the compensation package, and in a brilliant film for T.G. Cahar, uh, A Turning Tide in the Life of Man, a Mail in a Storm, or in, in Aden on Tilla, by the French film producer Locke Jordan, the seed or the idea of heritage licences for fishing tied to a cultural link to a specific area emerged. And Mr O'Brien's advocacy and awareness was, I think, the acorn seed for this concept. 
It was all about her refusal, I suppose, to dispose of his children's rights and, if, and, and, and her grandchildren's rights, which of course started to grow and was strengthened by, as a result of the report uh, referenced here this evening on promoting rural coastal and Ireland communities from the subcommittee on fisheries. I think this was one of the periods uh, I'm a committee member of agriculture for the last nearly 20 years. I think I, I, think I was out of favour for a, a year there at that time, as most people know, and so I wasn't involved in under the chairmanship of Minister Doyle, now Minister Doyle, and it was published in January 2014. And of course, Minister, uh, Minister O'Brien just didn't stay, stop there. He went to the European Parliament and uh, they, uh, achieved with his uh, colleagues the insertion of a clause in the Common Fisheries Policy allowing member states to protect island communities. So he's already had a major achievement. So this thing of coming along and telling us can't be achieved is, is, is just uh, seeding uh, very easily to legal advice. The bill provides for the introduction of non transferable community quotas for the islands, which will be facilitated through the issue of heritage licences to island fishermen in order to carry out traditional island fishing practices. And season of small scale coastal fishing could be a lifesaver for these communities, as it would help sustain employment and thereby communities themselves, which in, turn, which in turn helps in the retention of school facilities and other important infrastructure on the islands. And if we don't take pro uh, proactive steps to sustain and maintain the island populations, by specific policy measures such as containing this simple but effective bill that may well have to be refined and amended, and every bill has to be done that, then the population will drift and disappear, and important parts of our culture, our heritage, our music, our language, or the dialect will be lost forever. So we are all aware that the ongoing losses suffered by Ireland's indigenous and sustainable island fishing communities are, un are undermining the cultural life, as I said, of our coastal peoples, as they struggle and grapple each day with the threat of impending further losses. And if this is allowed to continue without positive intervention like set out in this bill, the fabric of coastal communities will inevitably disappear. Other EU member states have argued successfully for heritage status for the islands. And here are we in, I an island, in Ireland here, and we have been tardy and reticent about our ambition to achieve the objective which Mr O'Brien and his fellow brave f fishermen have sought. Now is our opportunity. And if there is an EU objection to our, our reservation, tell them to get stuffed. We have been craving long enough. The Joint Rocks Committee sets out 29 recommendations to help and assist coastal communities through activities such as aquaculture, inshore fishing, tourism and seaweed activities. But as I have said, the issue of heritage licences is a recommendation number 10 that can be instantly achieved by facilitating the passage of this legislation. And the committee you know, prepared a very comprehensive report which necessitated a lot of meetings and work and detailed scrutiny. And the recommendations are instructive. And the subcommittee recommended that the government examines the feasibility of heritage uh, licences to be issued by the Department for rural coastal communities representing and facilitating traditional fish practices. So let there be no more beating around the bush, Minister. Let us stop kowtowing and ad adopting a subservient attitude to the EU Commission. These, as I said, can be facilitated within the terms of the current common fisheries policy framework. So far as I can see, the EU Commission seems to be generally happy or are eager to support proposals if they are facilitating the privatisation of our vital natural resources. I think there are various amendments that can be made, and if there are deficiencies in the bill, these can be remedied at the committee stage. Definitions can be refined, and appeal systems can be included. And I note there, as the Deputy, Deputy Kenny said, that small scale coastal fishing is defined as a fishing from vessels less than 12 metres in length and not using towed fishing gear. And I note on behalf of the Labour Party with full approval that precise legislative definition. And we in the Labour Party unequivocally support that. It is, Deputy Kennedy said, artisan fishing, uh, which uh, certainly contrasts favourably with the idea of large vessels and super trawlers who fish all before them and leave the small person uh, losing out the whole thing. For a century, the Labour Party supported and worked over island communities. And I do want to take this opportunity to reference the past work of our TDs, senators, council members, from Michael McCarthy in Cork South West, all the way up to Seamus Rogers and Donegal. Indeed, last July, I can tell my Donegal colleague here, that his former council Rogers was on straight away to make sure, obviously, he's our network and he's not miss a trick, and fair play to you for that. He was making sure that we we're going to be supportive, and we committed to that. Every year in Ironmore, where this bill was launched, there was a celebration of the life of the great socialist campaigner, Pat O'Donnell. Well, Pader was a socialist republican and lead organiser for the ITGW and never forgot the roots of Donegal and wrote the acclaimed Islanders in, 19, in 1928. The Islanders weekend in his memory is a unique event and it examines how to make life more sustainable on our islands. 
And this is all referred to in a, in, in a few articles I have read about this, uh, getting up to speed. But when you come from an inland county, you're not as familiar with the coastal county. If you were talking about lake fishing, I certainly would be far more informed on this. But I, I, I read a lot about this, and I read the report of the Fisheries uh, Committee. Uh, so the last two days has been busy, I might be honest. Um, so the, the, you know, uh, the theme of September's gathering was islands on the edge of what could be done to make life more sustainable on our islands. The bill, bill, this bill is welcome and timely, and again I, support, uh, I, I applaud the Sinn Féin deputies for bringing it forward. If we are to support our island communities, there must be a commitment to sustaining a livelihood. Fishing is the resource that stows us to them. Aramore, where this bill was launched by, I think, Deputy Kenny and, and Deputy Doherty, Deputy Ferris was, was, uh, contributed to his, his draft, I know, uh, but they launched it there. It, it was, it's an interesting example because it's the first offshore island to be connected under the Rural Electrification Scheme in 1957, 60 years ago, 61 years ago now. Today in the Dáil, we're debating rural broadband and trying to provide it to rural communities, the 520 odd 4,000 people who still have on it. And he include Banley Carrigan, Ballymore, and Castletown Gagan, and Cole Hill, and, and every place around us, Legan, Lenamore, Mother of God Almighty, Corrigan. And they divided up Ballinacarry, my own parish. They brought it as far as Sana, and we're looking up the road ahead and didn't do it. So at least the islands in '57 got electricity, thank God, our more island. But to say that a big area of my own in Ballinacarry can't get it is an absolute disgrace. But um, the, the, the quicker this is gone, the better. I, I, I wouldn't like to think uh, it, would have, it would have taken electricity hundreds of years to get there to Ballinacarry if it were dependent on what's going on now. <laughs> But today in the Dáil, as I said, we're debating rural broadband. If the, the government can't give islands a proper connection to the modern world, they should at least let them fish the waters off their shores to try and eke out a living and to pass it on to their, to their offspring. Padre O'Donnell championed the rights of seasonal potato pickers who had to travel to Scotland, and he would have recognised the challenges in this, and I, I have no doubt he will be at the forefront of the campaign to ensure this bill will be enacted. The challenges he faced in organising those workers still exist today, but in different forms. The gig economy may benefit some, but it is not a sustainable job with decent terms and conditions. Fishing has traditionally been a mainstay for our islands, and this bill would undoubtedly ensure guaranteed rights and some chance of ensuring the continued population of our islands. And it is for that reason that the Labour Party will unambiguously and unequivocally support the bill. We have fear broadwell faster in Yanatlamaj Kolyaki and Shin Fein and Rakdir Chaw Awalu. Firstly, let me start by saying that I'm delighted to be here this afternoon and to see so many people contributing to the debate. And it, it may appear that not everybody will be able to have their voice heard. And that's, that's, a, that's a good thing that there's such a demand on this piece of legislation. And I'm delighted uh, that I was able to sponsor this bill along with my colleagues, uh, Deputy Martin Kenny uh, and Deputy Martin Ferris. And I had the pleasure uh, a number of months ago accompanying Deputy Kenny to Arnmore Island off the coast of Donegal, where we together launched this significant piece of legislation. Uh, and earlier this year, uh, I did the same on Tory Island. And, and I say it's a significant piece of legislation because that's exactly what this legislation is. The Island Fisheries Heritage Bill is both significant and it is historic. Why, you may ask, it's because it seeks to put an end to the years of decline which we've unfortunately witnessed for all too long in our offshore island populations. And in drafting this legislation, Sinn Féin worked closely and in consultation with the Irish Islands Marine Resource Organisation, the IIMRO, an organisation that is dedicated to promoting and defending fishing communities on the island. It's an organisation whose origins stem from the long struggle experienced by Donegal Island fishermen for recognition of their rights. This follows both the onshore offshore banning of salmon fishing in 2006 followed closely by the ban of all net fishing in 2008 in an area known as Area 6A. And I'm happy, in fact, to report that a number of their members are here with us in the gallery this afternoon. They include our more native Gerry Early and Seamus Boner, who has already been mentioned, as well as others who have been instrumental in developing, campaigning, promoting this bill, which is before this House. 
And I think it's only right that we pay tribute to those individuals for the role that they have played in bringing the plight of island fishing communities to the fore, because this bill would not have seen the light of day if it was not for them. It is their seat. It is their it, th those th they that have nurtured it, and indeed there are many references to the report. And I do commend the chairperson of the report at that time, Minister Andrew Doyle. But it was also the island community, particularly in Arnmore, who, were the, who was the idea behind that, and who wrote to the committee way back, arguing to be given a voice. And thankfully, the committee gave a voice, had a report, recommended the legislation that we have before us, and that just speaks to the length of time that they, those on the islands have been campaigning uh, for their rights. I mentioned the organisation that was established, an organisation that was established before the National Inshore Fisheries Forum and the Regional Inshore Fisheries Forum, and many would argue whose work led to the establishment of those forums. Because Shilam Bahor doing Armuhasagal, Legojirakti Gujisha, Agaziat Fossum on Factus on Antas on Jama, Le Charti Yeskarin Elan. Factus New Wen, a wall in our Fuilwen Shawl in Erin, a factus of Ecorus Core, Utrecht in the Europe, Foste, Egelene, John O'Brien, a Gus Kruhas, the Yeskarin Yeri, a Gasalier Siskanen, a turning tide in the life of man. And when I use the term Kruhas or hardship in English, don't anyone in this chamber think for one second that such a word is not appropriate in the terms of the difficulties which our island fishing communities faced or have been forced to contend with down throughout the years. These include the likes of Tory, Arnmore Island and indeed many, many others, where fishing has long played a central role in not just the local economy but in island life more broadly. And it is here that we get to the nub of the issue in relation to this bill and why this bill is so important. It is because if enacted this legislation will ensure that island-based fishing communities will, for the first time, have the rights to practice their long established traditional fishing methods both protected and recognised by law. These are rights and freedoms which for years now successive governments have failed to protect and defend. And this failure to stand up for the island communities has seen many of their inhabitants having their livelihoods unfairly robbed of them. It is meant that a once proud fishing people have all but been barred from fishing the very waters which surround the place that they call home. And just for one moment, we should put ourselves in the shoe, their shoes for just a second. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Tory Island and I was speaking about this bill, and I was thinking those very thoughts. And earlier this week, I was in Iron Moor and looking out at the Atlantic Ocean and thinking the same. Imagine that you are the son or a daughter of a fisherman from Tory Island, and despite the waters around you, having long been a means for sustaining and supporting your family and for generations before you, that those same waters are now forbidden territory. Because that is what the reality is for island fishing communities. That is their reality that they face today. And it is both shocking and shameful, and it must not be allowed to continue. So the Minister may want to nitpick at this bill. He may want to mind, mind to find flaws or have smoke screens or mirrors or whatever. But if you genuinely believe in the future of island communities, you should be standing up and saying, let's do this together. Because one way or another, with government support or not, this legislation is passing. There is enough people in this House, and I believe the Minister is one of them, who know that this is the right thing to do. So this will pass, and I'm asking you to get on board, to have your officials in your department get on board so that we bring in the best heritage licence bill that we can to make sure that that reality that I painted about staring out at the waters that are ripe with fish and being forbidden to, to fish is no longer the reality. This bill is an effort to right that wrong. Our bill is designed to facilitate the continuation of traditional fishing methods which for centuries have sustained island po populations. If enacted and through, through exploiting the limited scope 
which exists within the common fisheries framework, this legislation will allow for the provision of dedicated ring fence quotas, non transferable quotas on our offshore islands. It will provide for the issuing of licence to island fishermen habitually resident on these islands and who engage in small scale coastal fishing to earn a living. In an effort to ensure this legislation is robust, it is that its provisions are lawful and that the integrity of the legislation is ma maintained, we have purposely included a number of restrictions. These are to ensure that the quota can't be transferred to anybody else, that the licences cannot be traded or sold off, as has happened in the past. So let me be clear, this bill won't completely undo the imbalances which exist in our current fishing law, which have unfairly tipped in favour of the select few. However, this legislation, I believe, and I believe passionately, will go some way towards ensuring that small island fishermen have a future. A future where islanders can fish their waters without fear, without impunity, and most importantly, a future where they can have hope, not just for themselves, but for their islands and for generations of islanders to come. And I plead with you, Minister, as I said, this legislation is going to pass, so please get on board. I said to the island community and the, f the fishermen on both Tory and Iron Moor, because we had the support of Fianna Fáil, we had the support of Labour, we had the support of independents. There are enough people in this House who support this concept, but I said that is not good enough. What we want is we want this House to speak with one voice, because this is even bigger than the issue of the right to fish for island community. This will be this House saying that we recognise island communities as special and distinct, and we are willing to, in the Irish law, carve out a space for you. Recognition of the challenges, the difficulties that have been placed on you by governments and by nature. That is what this is about. So I appeal to you, do not vote against this or call a vote in the next couple of minutes. Let this House stand together. Let this House send a signal to the fishermen who travelled from our offshore islands, from offshore Donegal and from elsewhere, and to those who weren't able to travel, who want to hear that now they have a government and a parliament who recognises their identity, their challenges, and wants to do something to make sure that they have a future in the place that they call home, in the place that they love, which is the offshore island. Gormaigat. John Carlin, I am glad to have the opportunity here today and I would like to commend the work of the, uh, the Cross-Party Committee which made this recommendation and also commend Sinn Féin for bringing the bill on the back of that recommendation before the House here today as well and indeed welcome many of the uh, fishing representatives from our islands who are here in the audience. Um, I, I would urge you, Minister Doyle, and, and also commend you for your role, which has been remarked upon by previous speakers in relation to chairing that committee and putting that valuable report together. But of course, it is absolutely crucial that these reports just don't be carried out and have recommendations uh, uh, published and then not be acted upon. And the report of, of the committee you chaired followed on from previous um, reports um, in the noughties. There were two, I think, in 2003 and 2007, if, if I recollect, but there were certainly two in advance of that. And what's crucial is that we see those, those recommendations actually put in place, because there's no doubt that our island communities have suffered tremendously. And as new jobs have been created in the wider economy and new global jobs and new sectors have been created, uh, these new um, jobs haven't arrived in our islands, but at the same time the traditional jobs have been leaving them. And as a result, incomes have been reducing and they've also experienced immigration in a way that other parts of the, the country has not. And the, the, the income levels are, are much lower and all the stats would, would, show that, would show that to be the case as well. Yet those who are, in the, who are on the islands are very dedicated to their, to, to, and, and committed and loyal to the, their way of life and make the absolute best of the resources that are available to them. And it's absolutely crucial that a national policy, from a national policy point of view, we try and assist that and work with them. I'd like to commend the, um, the, uh, the Irish Marine um, Resource uh, Organisation um, uh, for the work that they have, uh, Islands uh, Marine Resource Organisation, for um, the work that they have done in terms of pioneering this. And I know, Minister, um, from your contribution previously, you have indicated that um, 
you have a concern in relation to the bill and may not be supporting it. Um, however, I would point out to you that the cross-party support that is here means that that bill can actually go forward. But it should not be done with the government having its heels stuck in the ground in relation to it and trying to resist it. I would encourage you to actually embrace the bill and try and work with it. And if it requires amendment, then let us have those debated. Committee, committee um, stage actually provides that opportunity and that can be facilitated. And indeed, the bill can be, can be added to and teased out further uh, as required. I think the overall objective of 1% of quota, which is what has been indicated would be required here, is, is, not, is not significant in, 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 the, in the round, but it would be particularly significant and important were it to be allocated to, um, to the islands uh, and specifically for island-based uh, island fishermen. I think, um, Chairperson or, or Kahirla, um, the letter which all of us TDs would have received from um, Seamus Boner um, of the uh, Irish Islands Marine Resource Organisation uh, 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 in the name of uh, the Chairperson, Jerry Early, um, outlined very clearly um, the importance of the bill. And in the letter, Ms. Rarely said, the ongoing losses suffered by Ireland's indigenous and sustainable island fishing communities are undermining the cultural life of our coastal peoples, and they live every day with the threat of further losses. Making a life out of the sea is not just about fishing. It is a way of life and fundamental to the fabric of life in coastal communities. People are sustained not just by the food and income it supplies, they are sustained by the songs, stories and ancient traditions it inspires. Ireland's islanders have been farmers and fishermen for generations, living in harmony with the needs of the land and the environment. However, current and future generations of island dwellers are forced to emigrate or move to the cities. This unique way of life is being lost as a result. I think that puts it very well, um, uh, uh, Corla, and I think that shows and puts the onus on us as legislators to work to try and ensure that the life and uh, incomes and uh, cultural lifestyle of our islands, which is so important to the fabric of our country, that that can be maintained and we work with them to support that. As spokesperson for agriculture, I would point out in relation to, for example, the areas of natural constraint payments for land is there's a special category for the islands which pays at the maximum rate and recognition of the fact that farming is more difficult than islands. We should be doing the same in relation to fishing. Um, uh, so, in conclusion, I know time is short. I wish to support this bill and urge you, Minister, uh, to, uh, to, to allow it to go to committee uh, uh, with your cooperation rather than resist it, and also to work with all parties in the Dáil here to try and ensure what is a very worthwhile objective actually comes to fruition and we can support um, our island fishermen and communities. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say that I feel very blessed to represent a constituency that has islands, and I think everything should be done to enhance island living. Minister, the Common Fisheries Policy provides for small offshore islands which are dependent on fishing, and efforts should be made to enable them to survive. The idea of heritage licences is set out in the Oireachtas Report, a report which, of course, was endorsed by an all-party Oireachtas Committee in 2014. As stated by my colleagues, Fianna Fáil supports the main principles of this bill and we support its passage at second reading. Island fishermen live and work in a harsh and unpredictable environment and therefore this bill is all about fairness. Aside from this, the fishing sector is an essential part of the Irish economy, with Board Bia advising that seafood exports amounted to £645 million in 2017. This is particularly relevant in the light of Brexit. A hard Brexit would be detrimental to the fishing industry in Ireland. The government need to prioritise this and take a firm stance in relation to future trade links. Recommendation 10 of the report provides that the government would examine the feasibility on the issuance of heritage licences to rural, coastal and island communities. Such licences would essentially facilitate traditional fishing practices in conjunction with the establishment of a producer organisation representing vessels under a certain linked areas. I am speaking from the perspective of islands in West Cork, where traditional fishing practices are being eradicated, unfortunately. Once this unique and beautiful tradition, which is synonymous with Irish culture, fades out, it will be lost and lost forever, Minister. 
In that regard, there is an urgent need to attract younger people into the fishing sector. However, the future is far from certain. Specifically, I refer to Shirkin Island in my constituency, where I'm advised that currently there is nobody working in the fishing industry on the island. The last remaining fisherman, a young person incidentally, decided there was no future in fishing, or indeed no future in island living, and actually has left the island to live on the mainland in the last few months. Islanders in Shirkin, Cape Clear and Bear Island advise that there is no assistance made available to them and even if they decide to stay on the island, they are impeded by over-regulation. It is simply too hard to live from the ever-decreasing remuneration derived from fishing. The industry needs to be attractive, but more importantly, it needs to be viable. The West Cork Islands Interagency Group believes that the viability of the fishing sector will assist them in their objective to increase the population of the islands off West Cork. Heritage licences are a lifeline to the fisheries sector. Strict regulations which would limit the issuing of licences would guarantee that those most deserving and in most need would receive the same. Essentially, those resident on the islands and those with vessels no longer than 12 metres. This measure will ensure that small inshore fishing will survive and will indeed prosper, Minister. The Fianna Fáil policy paper seeks to build on the success of the Wild Atlantic Way by creating an Irish way. Any progress needs to ensure that all sectors prosper and none are left languishing behind, which is currently the case, unfortunately, with the fishing sector. Again, Minister, I would reiterate that the government must make fisheries a top priority. The introduction of heritage licences will demonstrate your government's commitment to this industry, Minister, and in that regard, I call on you and the government to act accordingly. Gormagut. Thank you, uh, Deputy Murphy. Now, uh, Minister Joe McHugh, you have four minutes or so. Uh, it is an important day uh, to have this debate, and a Thursday evening having this widespread debate, it is important. Uh, it's important that the recognition of the island community representatives who are here uh, to outline and highlight the significance of being from an island. I'll get into my car after this debate. I'll get a late dinner. The people from the islands won't know whether they'll get the last ferry or not. So uh, the significance and the hard reality of living in an island uh, has to be emphasised and emphasised again. Andrew Doyle prepared a report in conjunction cross party. It was an excellent report. Uh, his heart is in the right place with this. He's got the backing of Sean and myself, and uh, I've spoken to the Tisha at length about this as well. We want to, at, at all possible, where we, within the parameters uh, of the law, parameters of what's possible, to try to do so something. Unfortunately, we have an issue with process here. And it's going, you're going to win the vote anyway, because you're Labour, you've Sinn Féin, you've Fianna Fáil. But there's a difficulty with process. The Camp Corley and myself were teasing it out day in, day out, under this new regime of politics, where we've upwards of 25 private members' bills gone past second stage. They're sitting in a vacuum at the moment. We have to look at what's going to happen after this. What's going to happen after this um, is going to go not to committee stage. It's going to go to committee. The committee will have to go through all the issues raised by the department, the concerns by the, raised by the Attorney General in terms of the legal uh, issues, in terms of uh, what they see as a difficulty. But that is the place where it will be debated, and that will be the place where all parties will be able to tease this through. So it doesn't go to committee stage, even at that stage. So once it goes to committee, it has to get, after that, it has to get a money message, and that's an issue which we're having difficulty with as well. So what I'm saying here today is we have the principle of this issue at heart. There are representative organisations on the coastline. Me personally, I want to see inshore uh, getting a leg up as well 
as well as the islands, and nobody is against that. But to single out the islands, it's the significance of the symbolism, uh, symbolism of that, and I think we do need to go a step forward, further, and I want to pursue this issue as best I can. Sean Kine has a knowledge of the islands in his own constituency as well, as much as I do, uh, and we've cross-party uh, discussion on this here today, but it's process. It's what we do next, and it's the creating of the expectation when it's passed, and it will be passed today because you have the numbers, what happens next. And I want to be part of that discussion. I want to be, I want to be part of that conversation. And I don't want to be again in the braggy I don't want to be going out of here today just because this goes into committee. It doesn't go to committee stage. It goes to committee. It's further discussion. And that's the place where I want to be part of that. And I know my two colleagues want as well. But the... the, the the, the information that Minister Creed has been given at this stage, there are complications, but with all complications, we can try to get around them, and that's the space I would like, and that's, uh, that's what I would like to see continuing with this, with, with, with this, uh, particular, uh, with this particular piece of legislation. Fine. <coughs> Charles, what I'm a week ago, let's not chuck the dollar illig. It's been a more a rich school chamber, prive, I'm a foreign rates, so Achnamit Lodger of Hogal, like a Sahi Kurhan Makar fall on his Grafagela Dini, Markethal, Fween Tue, Agasan Kahraka, and Erden. Hurta Winch in the Hillon, Sonor of Sagatan a shot, Agastaisagam, Agastais Kamagam Rates, who will a Farga. Harter and Cheershore, Candon of Hakuni Nodura is Luchuna Luchura at Hagen. Ni Fedra will and Billishog Bunch and Lasses Fair as an Akuni Nodura show, Discre and the Nidog. In our era, Ni Fedra Lish and Billishog Galton as a horch, Ma Eshin and Tara, Cadenus, Nakurden and Co Barthes Eastgrafter are fall. Kamalashin, the Kaiblinch on Idur Erden, Agustirta Ella, Egarias or Tomontus, the Hovartis East Grotta, Agzagos Bradon, the principal in Hagriata on Huivnu Bradon, San Atlantic Hui or Nasco. Togan the Forum, Norshun to the East Grotta Cladi, Bunia, Egon Riltus, Jesh the East Gri Cladi, Kurlish and Policy, Banish the Agus Huivnu. I'd like to um, Whilst welcoming this debate uh, on the bill and um, comment about the en engagement uh, via the forums that I've mentioned is particularly appropriate to address the challenges facing uh, fishing communities. The first industry-led strategy for the inshore sector is currently being progressed, and I'd like to acknowledge the Irish uh, Islands Marine Resource Organisation to uh, Indy Keneally uh, and to Seamus Banner that I met on a number uh, of occasions, uh, both in the discussion on the report um, chaired by uh, uh, the committee report chaired by Andrew uh, and also um, in, in, in the course of preparation for this debate. Um, I've mentioned, as Minister with Responsibility for Inland Fisheries Sector, I've mentioned my concerns in regards to salmon. Uh, they have pointed out that they are not um, impacted uh, by this bill. Uh, that said, they are also not mentioned, so I just want to put that on record to, 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 to register my concerns. I know that, but I appreciate that, but it's that they're not specifically mentioned what, what species they're referred to, so I, I, I think it's right that we put, out, put on record my concerns, because uh, I deal with fishermen and coastal uh, fishermen and inshore fishermen um, in Donegal and Mayo and Galway, everywhere else, where their salmon stocks are under pressure, and there are international agreements. And there are no, no, I've, I've expressed my concerns. I've expressed my concerns as Minister. As Minister, I, I, I'm entitled to express my concerns. I'm entitled to express my concerns because there's no actual species mentioned uh, in the bill, which I thought there should be. But, uh, so I want to register my concerns because there are international agreements. We're a member of, the, of, of, of NASCO, as I said. It's important that uh, as many salmon from Irish rivers, uh, as well as those in other countries, migrate uh, to, to, to areas in, where they're being Greenland or the Faroes to feed before returning to the individual river to, to breed. And the, the, the prospect of successfully restricting Greenlandic and Faroes fisheries to protect our indigenous stocks is greatly reduced if we inappropriately uh, manage these same home and international stocks uh, off our own uh, coast. I'd like to point out, of course, that the Atlantic salmon is protected uh, under EU Habitats Directive, uh, with which Ireland's current salmon management regime uh, complies. Um, and there's always a spirited debate in relation to rivers that are open and closed uh, and uh, under catch uh, and, and release. 
Um, any deviation from current policy would be contrary to the international independent scientific advice of the home river uh, of offshore salmon. Uh, can it be identified and is it not possible to disaggregate the individuals or, or stock groups at sea? So in view of Ireland's commitment to the NASCO principles and our obligations under the EU Habitats Directive and also to the common fisheries policies as outlined by Minister Doyle, I have to register my concerns uh, on those matters regarding this bill. Uh, that said, on the principle of the bill, which is um, in relation to, to, to island communities, I, I, I would like to register my support. Uh, I find the current fisheries policy, to be honest about it, across Europe and indeed this, as, as part of Europe for this country as well, uh, not fit for purpose. The general principle of you know, larger ships I appreciate in general are safer ships and we must accept the safety of fishermen is hugely important. But the general policy of concentration of fishing quota in the hands of the few uh, is a policy that is unsustainable, very difficult to justify morally, environmentally uh, or economically. So I acknowledge that this bill goes some way in terms of, of um, protecting island communities and giving them a livelihood and I, I, I do acknowledge the work uh, of, of Sinn Féin and the support and we've had long discussions uh, myself and Minister McHugh, Minister Doyle with Minister Creed uh, on this matter so in, in, in the general principle of the bill uh, I do uh, support it uh, and I would just as I said like to acknowledge and register my concerns regarding uh, salmon. Uh, Deputy Kenny, is it? Uh, first of all, and I, I failed to do so in the outset, was to welcome the island fishermen community representatives from the, the various islands who are in the gallery here today to listen to the debate. Um, it has been a lengthy debate and it has been contributed by, by many uh, different views, but mainly the view and the consensus I think here is that people are supportive of what the bill is. And even in fairness to, to the ministers here, the broad principle of it you are saying you are in favour of. However, there are a couple of things, and I, I'm going through the Minister's speech here, just looking at it, the, the, the notion that uh, the bill gives one group entitlements above others. Yes, it does, unapologetically so. And the truth is, all of us, and if we just think about it in this chamber, every citizen of the country who's over 18 years of age is entitled to go in an election, for to be elected here. Yes, we have rules which state that parties have to select certain quotas of women for to be elected here. That's because we favour those over others for the simple reason that we have a problem, that we haven't got enough members here. And in, in, in many, many aspects, and indeed Deputy McConnell mentioned, I was going to mention to myself about the, the areas of natural constraint given special payments to the islands, given special payments to mountain areas. There's, there's umpteen examples where there are special circumstances acknowledged by government and those circumstances, special circumstances brought into law. And that happens everywhere we go. The, um, the other issue that I wanted to raise in it is that the, the, the say that the bill is too narrowly defined, to, the engaging in the, that the residents of an offshore island engage in fishing is too narrowly defined. You also say that um, how will residency be determined? You know, all these issues can be dealt with a committee. That's, that's where we deal with these things. You know, it would be, this bill would be 20 pages long if we were going to go into the detail of everything. We have to deal with it at committee. And when the, the, hopefully we get it to a stage where we are actually putting licences in place, it will be then up to us for to ensure that the minister will put a licence in place, will put whatever conditions and restrictions need to be on it. It does not define an offshore island. Again, all of that, there are already definitions there. The bill doesn't need to define it, but we will again come up with all of that when it goes to committee. The... Um, the long-standing government policy that Ireland's fish quota is a national asset. That's just a point that I, I took from you, from your speech, Minister. It certainly is a national asset. And therefore it is something that, as a government and as, a, as a, an assembly here, we have the power and we have the ability to decide how we use that national asset for the benefit of the people, for the national good. And it is my view, and I think it's the, the view of the majority of the members here, that the national good is served. By, by eking out a small portion of that quota and ensuring that it is given to the island fishermen so that they can continue to look after to, to sustain their communities. Um, you say that the bill provides no means of review or appeal or surrender or withdrawal of licence. And again, that's an issue to be dealt with at the committee. You also say that the bill is not a serious attempt to, to address the concerns of the island fishermen. And it brings me to the obvious question, Minister, was your committee not serious? about the report that you brought out, because it was part of that report that we have this bill. 
So if you're saying that the bill isn't a serious attempt, then you're saying that the entire work that your committee done and the report you produced wasn't serious. So, you know, there's, there's, there's more questions coming from your speech than there are answers, in fairness. And the first part of your, of your speech was entirely dealing with the, the various grants and, and various subsidies that are available for all fishermen, which all of the fishermen know about. And the, reason they know, and the reason they know about them, the reason they know about them is because they absolutely need them to survive. Yes, in, for, inshore fishermen, in fairness. The, um, the issue that was raised by, by Minister Kine in regard to the salmon is interesting because we did hear that there was talk about the, about the salmon being affected and the salmon coming up the rivers. The reality is what we're talking about here, and it states it in the bill, is that there will be quota specific, that it will be about quota species. So salmon doesn't have, salmon doesn't have a quota, so salmon would not be affected in regard to that. And again this, be, again, this is an issue which can be dealt, which can be dealt with that committee. There is no reason for any of these issues to be dealt with any other way. Now, the, um, and, and, sir, the, 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 other, the other issue is that all of us in this assembly have a responsibility to the people. And, you know, we have responsibilities to ensure that everyone gets a fair chance in life. And I was out on, on, on Iron Moor along with Pierce earlier this year. And you know what struck me was, you know, that the island is so much a part, so much a place aside. It's apart from the rest. It is this huge body of water and surrounded by quite a violent ocean around it very often. But yet we have to remember that it is still a part of our country, and the people that live in it are still a part of our country. And that is the key point of what we are doing here. We are trying to set out something which will ensure that these people who live on the islands, these communities who are vibrant, who want to have a future that they do have that future and that we set out a place where they can do it. Nobody is going to tell me that we're going to bring some multinational corporation to set up an industry on the islands. That's not going to happen. You know, we have to recognise that the islands have a difficulty and the only way that we can sustain these islands is by ensuring that the natural resource which they have around them, farming is difficult on the islands already, but the natural resource they have around them is the ocean and the bounty which that ocean brings forward and that they will have an opportunity for to fish the sea as traditionally as they have always done. And that's what this bill is attempting to do. The difficulties which you put up there, you know, we will accept that. There may be difficulties, there may be stuff that need to be dealt with. It can all be dealt with in committee stage. We can all get through all of this. The point that, that was made that it's about process and about the difficulties of so many bills being in queues and all of that. Look, is that, is that a reason to stop doing things? It certainly is not. What we need to do here, and I would appeal to the government again, to, to recognise what's happening. This bill is going to go through, and it would be a huge, uh, I think, respect for the island communities if it were to get the unanimous support of everyone in this House. And I would, I would <laughs> you know, think that the, the, at the end of the day, we have to stand up to the bureaucrats who will always find a reason why not. You know, and, and Minister, I know that there's a, a small number of civil servants in the Department of the Marine who for the past number of years, past number of decades, in my view and in the view of most people that have a look at this situation, have actually destroyed the fishing industry in Ireland, more than the European Union have. And we need, and your government and your minister needs to stand up to those people. And this is the first clink in the armour. This is the first time that we can do something which is for the people, not for the people who stand up and tell, you and tell us that no, you can't do it because there's rules. Well, rules are about changing. And the, the point was made that there's something illegal in this. Is this not where we decide what's legal or illegal? Is this not where we change things to make them legal if they're right? And this bill is right. And Minister, I would appeal to you and appeal to the government one last time to come forward, step up to the mark, Support this bill, support this transition through the, all the various stages and do something for the ordinary, decent people who live on our offshore islands to show that the rest of the community, as we know, do, to reflect the rest of the communities, care for them. Because everyone in every part of the country have a huge empathy for the people who live on our offshore islands and the hardship that they go through. And we now have an opportunity to do something that reflects that. So, Minister, I again appeal to you and to your government to make this unanimous support from everyone in this chamber. So with that, I commend the bill to the House and I propose that it moves forward.
it should have thought in the Guinea, Abertish Neil, a story of Gulen Kesht Ritchie. I believe the question is carried. Um, um, so the work will go no and lay a new person. No, we are going on a shot and attack. Can there be a dull and ish or a low? Could the a dull club the march of Hogan? Us Gamaleshkel, Gamaleshkel. We as this is a private member's bill, it must understanding order 84A and 141 be referred to a select committee. The relevant committee for this bill is the Select Committee on Agriculture, Food and Marine. Does Deputy Kenny wish to move the motion of referral now? Yes. Deputy Kenny removes, moves that it be referred to the committee. Is that agreed? Agreed. Gormahagav, Arish, Bondal, or Alogadi, Adol Klug, the Marcha Hohen.